Hey there, Earthlings. Welcome to the most terrifying job interview you've never had. Today, we're blasting off into the dark, cold, and utterly bizarre world of being an astronaut. Sure, it looks glamorous in the movies, floating gracefully, gazing at our beautiful blue marble, and making history. But let me tell you, the reality is about as graceful as a giraffe on roller skates. Buckle up because we're about to take a wild ride through the horrifying experiences that come with the job title Space Explorer. From bodily fluids with a mind of their own to toilets that cost more than your house, we're leaving no moon rock unturned. Think you've got what it takes to be an astronaut? Well, by the end of this video, you might be thanking your lucky stars that your feet are firmly planted on terra firma. So grab your freeze-dried popcorn and prepare for launch. The Claustrophobic Capsule All right, let's blast off into the first mind-boggling aspect of astronaut life. The Claustrophobic Capsule Buckle up, because things are about to get cozy. And I don't mean romantically. Imagine you're crammed into a space smaller than your average walk-in closet, except this closet is hurtling through the void at 17,500 miles per hour. Welcome to life aboard the International Space Station, where personal space is about as abundant as gravity. It's like living in a New York apartment, except you can't even order takeout. And let's be honest, even the most cramped studio in Manhattan doesn't come with the bonus of your roommate's sweat globules floating past your face. The living quarters on the ISS are so tight it makes that trash compactor scene from Star Wars look like a luxury spa retreat. Astronauts have to share a space of about 388 cubic meters with up to seven other crew members. That's roughly the size of a six-bedroom house, but before you start thinking that sounds roomy, Remember that half of that space is taken up by equipment and supplies. The actual habitable area? It's more like a small studio apartment. But hey, at least in sci-fi movies like 2001, a space odyssey, the astronauts got those sleek, minimalist pods to snooze in. ISS astronauts Velcro themselves to a wall to sleep, like some sort of human sticky note. And forget about privacy. The bathroom is about the size of an airplane lavatory, but with the added challenge of, you know, everything floating around. So next time you're feeling cramped in your earthbound abode, just remember at least you can step outside for some fresh air without the risk of being sucked into the cold, unforgiving vacuum of space. In space, everything floats. And I mean everything. Your body fluids decide to throw a zero-G party, and suddenly, they're not playing by Earth's rules anymore. Without gravity pulling them down, fluids shift upwards in your body. This leads to what astronauts lovingly call puffy face, chicken legs syndrome. Imagine waking up every morning looking like you've had an allergic reaction to the entire universe. But wait, there's more. Your inner ear gets confused without gravity, leading to space motion sickness. It's like being on a never-ending roller coaster, except the only thing going up and down is your lunch. And speaking of lunch, digestion becomes a whole new adventure. Gas doesn't rise in your stomach, so burping becomes a risky business. One wrong move and you might end up with a mouth full of, well, Let's just say it's not pleasant. Now let me tell you about the time an astronaut accidentally created a floating bubble of urine during a spacewalk. Houston, we have a problem indeed. The poor guy's relief tube disconnected inside his spacesuit. Talk about an embarrassing wardrobe malfunction. But here's a challenge for you, dear viewer. Imagine trying to brush your teeth when your toothpaste decides to float away. It's like playing whack-a-mole with minty fresh blobs. And don't even get me started on what happens when you spit. Let's just say, in space, no one can hear you gargle. All right, space cadets, 
Let's dive into the most unsettling aspect of space travel. The bone-chilling, hair-raising, utterly terrifying silence of the cosmos. You're floating in your spacesuit, tethered to your spacecraft, and you decide to turn off your radio for a moment. Suddenly, you're enveloped in a silence so profound, it's almost deafening. There's no air in space to carry sound waves, which means the vacuum surrounding you is completely and utterly silent. It's like someone hit the mute button on the entire universe. You thought your awkward first date was quiet? Try being surrounded by literal nothingness. At least on that date, you could hear the clinking of cutlery or the awkward throat clearing. In space, you can't even hear your heartbeat outside your suit. It's just you, your thoughts, and the vast silent void. This silence is so complete, so absolute, that it can be psychologically overwhelming. Astronauts have reported feeling a profound sense of isolation and smallness in the face of this cosmic quiet. It's a reminder of just how tiny we are in the grand scheme of things. As Paul Davies points out in his book, The Eerie Silence, this quietude extends beyond just our immediate surroundings. It encompasses our entire search for extraterrestrial life. But here's a mind-bending thought. While space itself is silent, that doesn't mean there's no sound in the universe. NASA has recorded sounds from planets and stars, converting electromagnetic vibrations into audio we can hear. So, while you're floating in silence, the cosmos is humming with activity. You just can't hear it with your ears. So, the next time you're craving some peace and quiet, just remember, space takes silent treatment to a whole new level. The mental challenges astronauts face in space. Being an astronaut isn't just about floating around and doing cool science experiments. It can be tough on the mind. Imagine being stuck in a tiny space for months on end, far away from your family and friends. It's like being grounded by your parents, except your room is the size of a closet and you can see the entire earth from your window. Sounds cool at first, right? But after a while, it can start to feel lonely up there. Astronauts often deal with feelings of isolation that can lead to some not so fun stuff. They might feel sad anxious or even a bit cranky it's kind of like when you're stuck inside on a rainy day but it lasts for months some astronauts have trouble sleeping or concentrating on their work others might feel homesick or miss simple things like the smell of fresh air or the feeling of grass under their feet to help deal with these feelings astronauts do a few things they talk to their families through video chats kind of like a super long distance facetime they also keep journals to write down their thoughts and feelings. Some even use special virtual reality goggles to feel like they're back on Earth for a little while. NASA takes this stuff seriously. They train astronauts to deal with stress and teach them ways to stay positive. They also make sure the crew members get along well before sending them up together. After all, when you're stuck in a tin can floating through space, you want to make sure your roommates are cool. But hey, astronauts say the view makes it all worth it. First, let's talk about the beauty. When you're out on a spacewalk, you get to see the Earth like never before. The colors are more vibrant and the view is simply breathtaking. It's like being in a scene from a sci-fi movie, but it's real life. You can see the curve of the Earth, the deep black of space and even the sun rising and setting in a matter of minutes. It's a sight that no photograph can truly capture. But with this beauty comes danger. Spacewalks are one of the riskiest things astronauts do. You're outside the safety of your spacecraft with only a thin suit protecting you from the harsh environment of space. If something goes wrong, like a tear in your suit or a piece of space junk flying by, it can be life-threatening. As astronaut Mike Finke said, a spacewalk is probably the most dangerous thing we do. Now imagine this, you're floating hundreds of miles above Earth 
and your only lifeline is a tether attached to the space station. One small step for man, one giant leap for your anxiety levels. It's like being on the edge of a cliff, but instead of falling, you could float away into the endless void of space. Talk about a high-stakes situation. Despite the risks, astronauts train extensively for spacewalks. They practice in huge water tanks on Earth to simulate the weightlessness of space. They also use virtual reality to get a feel for what it's like to move around outside the spacecraft. All this training helps them stay calm and focused when they're out there, doing important work like fixing equipment or installing new parts. You might think the hard part is over, but returning to Earth comes with its own set of challenges. First off, there's the actual trip back. When astronauts re-enter Earth's atmosphere, their spacecraft heats up like a marshmallow over a campfire. It gets so hot that the air around the spacecraft glows. Inside, the astronauts feel a strong push as they slow down. It's like being on an intense roller coaster, but it lasts much longer. Once they land, things get even trickier. Remember gravity? Well, it's been waiting for them, and boy, does it make itself known. It's like gravity has been hitting the gym while they were gone. Suddenly, everything feels super heavy. Even lifting their arms can be a struggle at first. Astronauts often feel dizzy and wobbly when they first get back. Imagine spinning around fast and then trying to walk in a straight line. That's kind of how they feel. Some astronauts even need help getting out of their spacecraft because their bodies aren't used to standing up anymore. But it's not just about feeling heavy and dizzy. Their bodies have to readjust in other ways too. Their bones and muscles got weaker in space, so they need to exercise a lot to get strong again. Some astronauts have had trouble with their vision for a while. And get this, they even must relearn how to walk properly. The good news is that most astronauts get back to normal quickly. NASA astronaut Frank Rubio, who spent 371 days in space, said he was feeling pretty good just two weeks after coming back to Earth. But it can take months for everything to get back to exactly how it was before. We've talked about the cramped living conditions, the wild ride of bodily fluids, the eerie silence of space, the tricky spacewalks, and the tough return to Earth. Through it all, astronauts show incredible resilience and bravery. They face challenges that most of us can't even imagine, and they do it all in the name of exploration and science. So next time you complain about your commute, just remember at least you're not hurtling through space at 17,500 miles per hour. Here's a question for you. Quota Q. If you had the chance to go to space, would you take it, knowing all the challenges? With that said, thanks for watching, and until next time.